Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. I have six uh, Iberian whites in front of me, um, two from Portugal and uh, four from Spain. Uh, but the Portuguese and Sp Spanish ones are grown not all that far apart. And some of them share the same grape variety. Anyway, let's dig in. We've got two vineyards to start from, with from Portugal. Uh, first one is called Raza. Uh, 2000 and, uh, 2012, yes. Uh, Branco, um, let's just give it a whirl. Well, I don't know if you heard a slight fizz when I opened the bottle then, but um, it's in common with quite a lot of vineyard there. It's got a little bit of sparkle to it to uh, add some freshness. Uh, but I stick my nose in there and it feels like it was pretty fresh in the first place. Uh, there's this quite bracing, uh, appley citrus freshness. Um, it feels like it's going to be quite light, refreshing, but um, with zip. I'm pretty good it is too. Just what I want from uh, Vigna Verde. Actually, probably a little bit more than I expect from Vigna Verde. Um, what I, what, what's good here is it's got that freshness, a touch of that briny Atlantic bite. Uh, is it from sea breezes uh, uh, with salt settling on the on the uh, the vines? Uh, I don't know, but there's that. But there, there's 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 also a greater weight of fruit than uh, uh, than you're getting quite quite a lot of them. And um, so whereas some of them they, they, they they're okay to start with, they've got that citrus freshness, and then they sort of go mm. um, here. It's got some uh, apple uh, fullness to um, to round it out and uh, leave you coming back for another sip. Yep, nice start. Uh, okay. Um, this is Alvarinho, um, the grape variety which on the Portuguese side of the, bo the border is known as Alvarinho and on the Spanish side, which we'll come to in a moment, it's Albarinho. Uh, but this is uh, as Vigna Verde, 2012, Tercius, uh, from the southern region of Moncao and Meliaco, which is uh, Alvarinho Central. Now the Vigna Verdes made from uh, Alvarinho uh, tend to be a bit uh, fuller and uh, higher in alcohol than uh, uh, than the uh, the ones made from the the the, the grapes of Trechidura, the Lourero and um, the other ones that I can't quite remember just at the moment. Um, but uh, here uh, it's, it is a bit higher. I mean, the first one is eleven and a half percent. This one's twelve and a half percent. But here it still feels like it's going to have a bit of bite and briny freshness to it. Um, it's not trying to uh, overcharge the over ripen the grapes and try and make something big and voluptuous. It feels like they're they're trying to make something that's still got a little bit of uh, almost steely restraint to it. Yeah, and it's got really nice tension between a big, um, uh, juicy, quite exotic um, peach, pear, almost viognier-like fruit. Um, and then this minerally um, streak of, um, of, of purity that, uh, that's just keeping it all fresh. Almost like that's a skeleton and this peachy fruit is round it as the... Uh, quite voluptuous exterior uh, but it never goes too voluptuous it, it still finishes fresh and uh, fresh and lively and pretty tasty wine actually we do like that uh, right hopping over the border to Spain now um, just the other side of the river really and uh, this is um, Aldi's um, the exquisite collection Alberino from the Rich Baixas region and it's a year old the 2011 let's give it a whirl well, it's the same alcohol, 12.5%, but here, I don't know whether it's to do with the extra uh, year's age or whether it's to do with the vineyards. It feels like it's going to be a, a big, a slightly fuller, richer, but maybe not quite as uh, pure and precise style. It smells okay, though. Well, as I was expecting, it's a bit fuller and richer than the, uh, uh, than the, the, the Vigna Verde, but um, maybe I listen, miss a little bit of that uh, precision that was, that was in, the, uh, uh, in the Vigna Verde. But um, pretty tasty wine, actually. Uh, I can't remember what, what sort of price it is, but uh, the exquisite collections, Aldi's upmarket uh, one. But here, uh, they seem to have got a pretty, pretty good example, and um, it's, um, it's 2000, well, what, we're in the middle of 2013 now, but this has still got freshness and uh, perkiness about it, and uh, yeah, tasting pretty good. Yeah, a bit of herb, bit of apple, peach, mm, nectarine, tasty wine. Um, right, uh, elsewhere in Galicia now uh, for Bolo, Mountain Wine Godeo from the Val de Oros region, 2012. Uh, Vintage uh, from, I suppose, I think of him as the king of the region, Rafael Palacios. Uh, he makes some pretty decent wine. His top one's one called Assortes. If you ever see that, go for it. It's uh, terrific. 
Well, this doesn't smell quite as exotic and um, spicy, floral, perfumed as the uh, as the the two Albarinos, but it feels like it's got ex as if it's going to have an extra uh, width of flavour. Does that make sense? It feels like it's going to have a little lots more going on. Um, so rather than just like one spike of very interesting spicy flavour in the previous two, here there's a little bit of nut, there's a little bit of cream, there's some peach, there's some pear, uh, there's some uh, ripe citrus in there, and. Uh, there's a stoniness as well that's coming through. And there's something that almost reminds me of Chablis there. There's uh, this, yeah, this stony, creamy mineral, that uh, mixture of um, uh, something that's, that's quite full, fleshy flavour uh, with um, quite tight structure. It um, feels like it's going to uncoil a bit too. 2012 vintage. Um, and uh, so, yes, tasty this summer. Wouldn't be surprised if it's even tastier next summer. Final two are from Rueda, so not in Galicia now, but uh, um, uh, we are in the next door province, Castilla y León. Rueda is the uh, uh, the white wine equivalent of Ribera del Duero, just a bit further down the road, and you wonder sometimes how they can make uh, such crisp white wines in a place that they uh, not so far away they make quite throaty reds. Anyway, this is uh, Bresos del Valle, um, 2011 Rueda. Give it a whirl. Sometimes think of um, Verdeco as Sauvignon's slightly more, uh, less boisterous but more grown-up cousin. And uh, there's uh, certainly a bit of that uh, citrus grassiness that uh, I get in Sauvignon and some herby character. But um, it feels like there's going to be a more, yeah, almost like a slight smoky tinned pear character. I get that character in White Bordeaux and the Verdeco and White Bordeaux I, I often um, find similarities between. Uh, it's particularly when they, they've got a bit of oak on. I think the next one's got a bit of oak, so it'll be interesting to see whether I get those characters here. But yes, it's uh, this slightly, uh, you, when you, you know when you get a, get a pear and you, you, they've got that gritty texture. I do. But anyway, I'll taste it. That will go down a while with Sauvignon fans, but the good thing about it is there's some people who find, you know, as I say, Sauvignon a bit shrieky. Here, it has got a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit more grown up. Um, so um, I, I'm left with, uh, I've got those nice flavours. I've got the, the, that's like green flavours, if you want to call them that. The, the green gauge, the, um, the citrus, the bit of apple um, and, the, and the pear. Uh, but there's, um, yeah, a bit more texture, a bit less... Um, a bit yes, less yap, um, and um, I, I do like that. I, I, I like both those. I I've liked all of them so far. Let's see whether we can uh, um, complete a, a sex set of ones I like with the, the final one, which is Finca Constancia Parcella 52 Verdeco um, 2011 Fermentado en Barica. Well, this one isn't from Rueda. It's, uh, it wouldn't be surprised it's from vineyards close to uh, Rueda, but it's uh, a Vino de la Tierra. Um, and um, so but I stick my nose in here, and uh, it, as I say, it says fermentado en barrica, oak fermented. And I get a little bit of that smokiness from oak, but it also feels like it's going to be a fuller, uh, fleshier wine than the previous one, but maybe not quite as um, fine boned. Let's have a see. Well, it's good, but uh, I don't know if I prefer the unoaked one. I think what they, it, it almost feels like they're trying a little bit too hard here to uh, uh, inject flavour into the wine. Now, some wines can stand up to oak ageing, um, uh, and some wines are... Uh, they're not all the better for it. It's a bit like... Uh, I think of oak as sometimes being a bit like makeup. Um, and and it, uh, if you've got any, any daughters who are uh, of an age... Yeah, between 7 and 12, and they get hold of, uh, of mum's makeup and they sort of put it on and they, they don't do a very good job and they look a bit they look far less attractive than than, than they do without it here it almost feels like they that yeah a young wine has got too much of mother, mother's slap on it feels like the wine underneath is okay uh, but I almost wish they hadn't done it uh, the other thing I noticed is a slight bitter pithy character as if uh, the juice and the skins have been together for quite a time and it's extracted in it's extracted both flavor but it's also got some uh, slightly bitter tannins at, in there so um, Probably my least favourite of this uh, of this sextet. It's still all right, um, and uh, but uh, the other five were for me a step up. And uh, the Gudeo and the Rueda, the, the first Rueda, were uh, pretty good. Those are my favourites. I'll be having a sip of those soon. See you soon.